Hey, hey, everybody. Good afternoon. I am Tim Gillette here with the Tim Gillette Show. I'm your host here with this show where we interview some of the most interesting and coolest people on the planet to find out how they do things, who they help, what they do to change our world and make it better. All right. Just like today's. Today's guest is one of those people who are changing the world for the better. Now, I really don't know Dr. Ozzy personally. He was introduced to me through a friend. I know little bits about him. I'm going to find out all about him on the air today just like you are. So we do live in the same area, I can say. I guess we kind of live in the same town. But other than that, I'm going to find out who he is just like you are. But I tell you what, from everything I heard, he's a good guy, man. He's people out helping people. So let's bring him on the show and find out who he is. Dr. Ozzy, how are you, my friend? I'm good, Tim. How are you doing today? Good. Good. You know, it, it, it's nice day here in Dallas. I know you live in the Dallas area too, is it? It's it's yep. like nice, uh, you know what I mean? But like we're getting into that hot season, like, you know, in Texas where I, like I want to be down the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little balmy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 80 at, uh, you know, 6 in the morning. That makes it a little tough on you. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Dr. Ozzy, I mean, I've, I've, I've investigated a little bit to find out who you are and what you do. And, 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 uh, you, I see you're helping some great people. Uh, before I get into that though, I mean, I know you live in Dallas. Uh, yep. you, have you lived here your whole life? Uh, no, grew up in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, came down here, geez, in my twenties, mid twenties for school, did my under, undergraduate in Canada, university of uh, Mount Royal, uh, played hockey college up there. And then I uh, got tired of the cold and said, where is a warm spot to go? And uh, Texas, Tejas, was the place to go, clearly. <laughs> so a lot of people uh, get complaining about the heat. And I'm like, ah, I'm still okay with it. It's been 20 plus years, but I'm, I'm definitely okay um, with the fact that it's nice and warm because shoveling the snow and all that is, is not great. So went to school down here, got married, had a kiddo, and here I am. So yeah, you said twenty years. So you moved down here in the late nineties. Yeah, well, yeah, probably. Well, actually, uh, mid mid nineties, like ninety four. Okay, ninety five okay. right, right in there. So the mids, yep. All right. So you moved here about four or five years before I did. My brother Nathan moved here. I'm from Pennsylvania, and okay. he moved here in ninety four. Yep. Um, and then he left here in two thousand two, <laughs> and I moved here in in ninety eight. So like I was here for four years. He left. He lives overseas now. Uh -huh. But it's like it's unique. I, I moved here the same reason. I yeah. hate the snow. I did not want to shovel it anymore. I was done. Yeah. 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 I got a couple of buddies still back up there and uh, they're like, kids don't play any sports outdoors, right? All indoors. So like, why are we here? <laughs> so, so though, but you said you were into hockey. So that yeah. means you were here when we won. Yes. All right. Yeah. That was like one of my first years here. We, we, we won really? the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not a bad way to go. Right. No, no. <laughs> Cause um, it, uh, the cup runs are fun. I yeah. mean, definitely any championship run is, is fun, but any, uh, definitely any championship. All right. And since I've been here now, all right, the, you know, the baseball team, the, the mm -hmm. Rangers, they've gone yep. to the world series. They didn't win though, but they went, yeah. Um, the Mavericks. I was here for the Mavericks. Oh my God. That was one of the most exciting times to be in Dallas. Yeah. Now I was, I've not been here since the football teams. All right. Like yeah. I moved here after the Cowboys. Run. Yeah. yeah. Really good. And, and I, I moved here from Philly. Uh, so I'm still an Eagles fan yeah. in Philadelphia and football, but I moved here and I said, you know, it'd be nice to live in a town that ha that wins an NFL championship. <laughs> And they haven't even made the playoffs yeah, since yeah. I've been here. Yeah, you're bringing some luck with you. <laughs> hey, but but a couple of years ago, all right, uh, the yeah. the Eagles went and won the Super Bowl finally. Yeah. Uh, and then this past year, all right, as an Eagles fan, we all loved uh, the coach who then who then went on to coach the the um, the you know St. Louis or not St. Louis um, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. and he won a Super Bowl this year, so it's like, man. All these things are happening. It's like, maybe we need to get rid of Jerry Jones. I think yeah. he's the problem. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll keep that quiet. <laughs> but uh, it seems like his son and a few other people are moseying in there, and there's been some uh, some positive changes yeah. as opposed to, you know, the mid to late 90s. Yeah. So I think, yeah. yeah, about early 2000s and so on. So, yeah, yeah. Def def definitely better. But, yeah, they've struggled for sure. 
So, I mean, now that you don't, I mean, you, you, I mean, you don't play sports, but I mean, is sports something you were into now? I know you played hockey earlier, but are you still into sports or? Um, you know, uh, I actually played in a men's league down here when I first got down. Mm -hmm. Loved it. it um, in fact, some of the uh, Dallas Stars, when we were lucky enough, one of the guys that I uh, ran our team, he actually worked for the Stars. Um, and uh, he, great guy. Anyways, he would always go, hey, if you guys want to come out for a skate, because we played in the double A league at the time, which was which is the best league. And there's a lot of just kind of ex-pros ex and stuff like that, more minor league pro. But some of those guys actually come out and they'd, you know, skate with us a few times mm -hmm. so that was that was kind of nice I think Guy Carboneau was out with us and Moro was out with us once or twice and it, it's just in uh Craig Ledwick came out so it's kind of nice to have those guys out and just see them and even if they're retired they're still phenomenal but uh, I got you know we as an old guy you get the late night 11 o'clock 10 o'clock game schedule and then you're you know getting to bed at 12 or 1 and and uh, waking up with the kiddo and stuff like that at six in the morning and getting to work. It, it's too much of a beat down. So unfortunately, yeah, I haven't been able to get back out to it, uh, but I'd like to, because it definitely was a lot of fun. And then just sports in general. Yeah, I love them. I love, um, I played baseball, football, soccer growing up, you know, mainly hockey, uh, but um, love all the sports, love working with athletes. Athletes are actually a lot of fun to work with. Um, they're they're kind of like a racing car. You can you can just mess with them a bit and fine tune them, and and they're just they're uh, they're they're definitely a different body type that they can start to do some amazing things, and you're you're just blown away. You're like, yeah, I can't do that, and that's why I, I was never a pro. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. So yeah, well, you, you play yeah, so you play with Guy. Yeah, I used to wash Guy's car when I had a car wash business. Wow. Good, right good after, guy. right, right around time he was retiring. Yeah, I was wash. I used to wash his car. Yeah, he's a good guy. I mean, I used to have coffee yeah. with him on a regular basis too. Another great guy. Yeah, but it's interesting. We've been in some of the same circles. I yeah. guess. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. totally. Just how uh, things come around. Just took yeah. a while. So cool. So I mean, so you've been down here. All right. Yeah, I assume now you got a family down here. How, you got kids? Yeah. So I've got one uh, thirteen-year-old little girl who we love very much. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is uh, is actually born in uh, Chicago, moved here when she's about two. So she's a native Texan mm -hmm. and grew up in Arlington, uh, went to school out there. And then, uh, yeah, so she works for a company. Uh, they uh, help create the people mover systems, uh, like the uh, Skylinks and stuff at uh, uh, DFW. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the tram systems, they do that all over the world. So she does the business development for them. Cool. So um, that's super cool. Yeah, my daughter plays a ton of select soccer. Had her tried to play, uh, get her playing a little hockey. Uh, was it was disappointing at the time. They didn't have a lot of girls hockey. She loved it, man. She'd get out there and just like it was killing me because I was trying to teach her how to skate. And you know, you're all bent over. She was like three or four. Um, didn't want to come off the ice. Just loved it, but um, yeah. So I wanted to keep her going, but just wasn't any leagues at the time to to do that. So. Got into soccer and now, yeah, she just plays a ton of soccer and does well. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, you know, and now, uh, you know, I want to get into a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Uh, before I do, I mean, do you have any? Uh, you have any celebrities or or what do you say? Uh, um, sports figures that are your clients now or no? You know, I've got I've got one or two, but um, they're actually all retired. I like to get out of them before <laughs> before they get there, right? Because they're really quite beat up. I've got uh, one gentleman that played for the Mavs. Um, and I've had one or two hockey players that have been in the office. Um, had one football player at one time um, mm -hmm. uh, played for the Cowboys. But, yeah, they all seem to kind of get to me uh, after they're all beat up. So a lot of what we do, so we'll work with some athletes, but I seem to be in more chronic care. Oh, so okay. We'll get, um, and it's interesting because we were more integrative medicine, so we're kind of all over the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I seem to get a lot more patients where they're more chronic, right? Mm -hmm. Like they've got, they've had concussions or they've got arthritis or they've got, you know, autoimmune conditions and stuff like that. So again, I'll get some of those guys in the office, um, later on, which, which is, is fun. Cause obviously they want to enjoy their, uh, retirement years and, and playing sports. It's like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a daily car accident for those guys, you know, especially the hockey players and the football players. I mean, boy, they get, they get dinged up pretty bad. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you know, and, and for the listeners, why don't you explain a little bit about what you do and how you help the people? Or if you can give us a brief description about it so we get an understanding. Yeah. So functional medicine is kind of a paradigm shift within medicine. It's it's kind of a it still takes physiology, biochemistry, neurology, all the, the main sciences, but instead of focusing on disease, it actually focuses on the stuff that is the precursor to it. So it's more of a patient-centered approach mm -hmm. and lifestyle medicine than it is disease-centered approach. So disease is always after dysfunction. So you kind of have normal function, then you start to dysfunction, and that could be years or decades. And then eventually the tissue starts to change and then you can actually see the disease process there. So that's when a lot of times medicine will step in and go, okay, well, we got to manage your disease moving forward and hopefully it doesn't get worse. So functional medicine was just, again, a shift that said, hey, why are we waiting till people have the disease? Because it's so, more, so much more difficult to try and change tissue that's pathology than before it gets there, right? So it's a lot easier to basically stay out of trouble than get out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. So, and then even if you're looking at someone who has a disease, you still have to figure out, well, why, how did they get there? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting because every person, like they, let's say someone comes in and they've got a thyroid problem. They could get there 10 different ways, but they ended up in the same destination. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't want to treat them with the same, you know, protocol because that's not how they got there, right? Because they're, again, their story is different. So we're really focused in on, you know, how they got there. So uh, an example would be someone like, let's say Muhammad Ali and Michael J. Fox are two, you know, well-known. Parkinson's, yeah, Parkinson's, yeah. Parkinson's disease, right? So if you looked at Muhammad Ali, you know, there's so most of that's going to come back to brain inflammation. So Muhammad Ali got a punched a thousand times in the head, so it created a lot of damage and inflammatory cascade, and and it went down that Parkinson pathway. Whereas you know clearly that didn't happen to Michael J. Fox, so maybe his was more of a chemical issue that got him into a Parkinsonian uh, disease state. So now from there, instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to give you L-dope or a particular med, well, is there anything that we could do that would help that's caused that to happen, to stop happening, or at least slow it down, right? Like maybe make Michael J. Fox needs to detoxify. Maybe, you know, Muhammad Ali, honestly, and when he's around, maybe he had to, could have done work on cranial work and, and cranial sacral work and different physical neurological things from a structural standpoint, right, to, to make a, a, a change. To be helpful so yeah so functional medicine looks at really um the physical structural aspect of somebody those stresses the chemical stresses and then the mental emotional stresses so when we talk about patients 99.9 percent .9 of people um have a disease and are dying because they're overstressed so you think of stress it's like a bell curve so a little bit of stress we get up we pay our bills we do our radio show all these good things and we're productive members of society and then if we, for our genetics, if we have too much stress, that's when we go down the opposite side of that. And our genetics really just take us to our weakest link, right? So our genetics kind of tell us really, they're not the major players. They tell us where we're going to go and how quickly we're going to get there. Mm. So if you have cancer in the, in the family or heart disease in the family, that doesn't really mean you're doomed by that. It just means that if you get too stressed physically, chemically, mentally, guess what? That's where you're going. Right. So we were are, are going to try and work on making sure, OK, well, you don't make the same decisions, the same choices that maybe your mom and dad and grandparents and everybody else did and start making changes to keep you away from that. So you still have to code for those genes. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, genes are really about 10 percent, maybe 20 percent. That's the current literature of the problem. It's actually our environmental inputs. So you can think of it like the software and the hardware. Your yeah. genes are the hardware. They haven't changed in thousands of years. But our software, our environment is completely changed in the last hundred years. We're, we're just a, tons of toxicity, tons of stress. And so that takes your genes and you just go to your weakest link, right? So, so that's functional medicine in a nutshell. It's really looking at people's story. So I'm less concerned about their diagnosis. Like, okay, I've got Parkinson's or cancer or whatever. And more concerned with how did you get there? Yeah. yeah. Really where therapy um and and prevention and treatment should lie so yeah. that that's basically us in a nutshell so i mean it, it's interesting you read that up now uh you know something you don't know about me is i have a form of epilepsy that okay. i've had since 1992 when i i was on a, a loading dock accident and a driving truck yeah and uh i did not get it under control until 2001 
where, I mean, basically I would randomly have a seizure. All right. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm medically controlled, but like they just threw medicine at me. You need to have, and I'm sure you're familiar with it in the doctor's terms, Dilantin. I, I take a, a version of Dilantin, which is like an age old in that. Yeah. And you know, the thing that my doctor said to me was, you know, it doesn't just matter about the medicine. He was wise enough to say, this is your health choices matter. So yeah. I take, I was supposed to take 300 milligrams of this every day. I take 200 milligrams and I have 200 milligrams since 2001. And I've only had, uh, you know, one seizure. And that was because I didn't take my medicine in 2016. I skipped a day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it was life changes. Right. I, yeah. I don't excessive drink. Yeah. I have a drinker now and then I don't, uh, you know what I mean? I, I, I exercise in a way like, uh, and, and, and tell me if this is stuff that you tell your people. I exercise. Like when I go to the mall, I don't park for the close up. I park way out and walk in. Yeah. If I've got to go up, a, it's three flights up a stairs at a hotel. I'll take fl three flights rather than wait for the elevator. Right. Those are things that I put into my habit system. Mm -hmm. And I, I assume now I, I, I realize for most of your patients, it's probably more than Tim. You got to walk up stairs instead of right. the elevator. It yeah. may be something different, but uh, am I on the same guidelines there of things yeah. that you're looking for yeah. in their health? Yeah, no, totally. So when we're looking at that, right, again, it's 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 fun in the aspect, but difficult we can burn out in that every single person is completely different. So for instance, with that, you may I might do that, but someone might walk up a flight of stairs and they actually have a problem, whereas the other person is that's actually beneficial. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. playing with that, and it's kind of like, you know, Goldilocks and the three little bears. It really is where it, it's the, a sweet spot, right? So you're trying to figure out those lifestyle choices that are actually going to be beneficial for someone who's got a serious issue, especially brain stuff. So mm -hmm. your nervous system is kind of like kind of an all or none theory. And, it, and if this is kind of like where it fires, you can change where your beginning point is. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people with seizures, they're, they're really closer to firing. So now that, that neuron, that part of your brain, it can be very touchy. So someone might come in, let's say they, they come into a room and it smells and they're like, oh, it's the worst smell ever because they're kind of hypersensitive because the resting rate is really higher than it should be. So it's okay. easier for them to fire. So now you're trying to find for that particular person, which is kind of difficult. Sometimes it's trial and error. You know, what type of exercise would work? You know, is that CrossFit or is that um, doing yoga? And then is it 10 minutes or 20 minutes? And it really depends on what's going on with, you know, how damage that that nervous system is or that mm. body is and then what other what other parameters are going on with it what other type of inflammatory processes are going on and so diet for sure when we talk about seizures you now before they had anti-seizure medication they actually would put people on a ketogenic diet mm. there's about a 66 percent decrease in seizures with people just being on a ketogenic diet so glutamate is like the kind of precursor that's excitatory that will push you into a a seizure state and so there's a lot of foods that would would promote glutamate um so again uh, a ketogenic diet is going to bring a lot of that stuff out and then you're using fat for fuel as opposed to sugar for fuel for the brain so definitely 100 those 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 lifestyle choices in that environment make a huge impact uh, on that uh, magnesium is a big one so magnesium is a is something that's kind of a blocker it's a lot of times with a seizure you'll get too much um calcium moving in there into the into the cell and you start over firing mm -hmm. um, and so magnesium is something that will will block that right so people that are low on that um, and they have a high glutamate level right all that stuff plays into it so those are definitely things that you can start to implement and see how much that helps right and every medication although maybe necessary all medications are what we call mitochondrial toxins so mitochondria make 90 4.5 percent of all the energy in the body and mm -hmm. if you don't have energy you you can't you're not here you can't function you'll you'll die so yeah. we have to be um, making energy all the time and we have to be proficient proficient at that and so anything that irritates our mitochondria makes us less proficient and we start to have more problems and again our the biggest energy dependent organ in our body is our brain Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So that's why a lot of times people, when they're not getting enough sleep and stuff like that, they go, boy, I sure had brain fog. I just couldn't think that day. And that's simply because their brain needs that energy and it's not, it's not getting it from their sleep and from their diet and all that. And there's getting things that will use up 
more of that energy. They're not as efficient, right? So you want to be as efficient as you possibly can. You kind of want to be a Lamborghini, you know, that's an ele electric Lamborghini, <laughs> if you want, or, you know, a diesel, anything that gets yeah. better gas mileage. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So 100%, 100% that, that is a massive part of it. Yeah. So see me, you know, me explaining that and then you coming back and sharing with me how that was. Now, when you get into the medical terms, I, I don't understand. All right. You know, I know some people say, Tim, you're smart. Yeah, but I'm not as smart as you, Dr. Ozzy, when it comes to medical terms. Yeah. Uh, I could be smart on marketing, but that's my intelligence. You yeah. know this, but when yeah. I bring that up, you, you just made me understand it. Oh. All right. And that is so cool in marketing. Uh, we, you know, we share with people, you know what I mean? How to make people understand it. And I teach stories and stuff like that, which, you know, you, you, you're connected to a lot of people here in town, same thing. And I love how you took, um, the Michael J Fox and, uh, and, and, and Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali story and related it. Yeah. And that is exactly, uh, what people need to understand, do need to understand it right yeah. now though. Um, you know, a lot of people are probably looking more into health things than they ever mm -hmm. were. Yeah. Uh, because of the current circumstances we're going yeah. on in our world. Yeah. What is, what, what are you dealing with, if anything, or any advice you're dealing with people who, who are dealing with this pandemic right now? Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one, right? I think it's a real call to arms. So, um, you know, viruses have been around since pre-dinosaur. I mean, they've got mm -hmm. viruses found in, um, in fossils and dinosaurs. So I think they said there's a, something called the virome. So there's like maybe 300 to 400 trillion viruses in us and on us at all any one given time mm -hmm. so th there's a book out there i don't know the author author i think it's um it's not us against them it's us with them mm -hmm. and um, it talks about bacteria and parasites and and even viruses and it comes back to okay um we we kind of have a synergistic relationship in a lot of ways and it really comes back to if your body's healthy enough you can manage manage these diseases or manage these viruses and there is no getting away from them at all. And so with us, I hope it's a call to arms to go, okay, if we're having such a problem with a particular virus, is it because the virus is so bad or is it also or mainly because we've beaten our bodies down so bad that we our immune system can't defend ourselves anymore, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so, and it, it really is more the latter, right? That as a, as a nation and maybe possibly as a world, we've become perpetually sick and unhealthy, right? Yeah, so yeah. when we talk about health, a lot of times medically we'll talk about that's the absence of disease. But if you look in medical terminology in the, in the dictionary, it, it's not just the absence of disease. Health is actually wellness, vitality, energy. All those other things are actually play into that definition, right? So when we kind of just push that away and just go, well, if I don't have a disease, I'm healthy. And that's really not true. And so most people out there are running around unhealthy. And so now, there, and we see if we look at the numbers, most of it is 65 and older. Uh, a lot of times they'll have one to five different health conditions that they're having a problem with the coronavirus. And so we look at that and go, for us, it's like a call to arms that we really want people to start getting healthy again. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if they get healthy, that's maybe their best bet to manage because uh, I think there's a, a doc in Harvard that mentioned the coronavirus may have mutated already 11 or 12 times. So, you know, it, it's out there, right? And um, so, I, again, I don't know that there's getting away from it. I think it's more of we've got to start strengthening our bodies back up and, and getting healthy again. And then having docs, uh, you know, medical doctors, osteopaths, chiropractors, really know well, what does that actually mean, right? Mm -hmm. how, how do we actually do that, right? And so, you know probably two ways. One, clean up the external environment, and then two, clean up the in internal environment. So what's going on inside the body? But yeah, so we've got a, a number of patients that um, they're kind of of that mindset already because we have a health and wellness practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of them are coming in and going, okay, what else can I do to keep my immune system as, as boost as possible? Um, and, and, you know, Sometimes I'm, I'm a little frustrated. I'll see the CDC and stuff, and I, I don't see a lot of information on, hey, you know, zinc and vitamin C and, and these things. And I think there's like 28,000 PubMed peer-reviewed literature on how vitamins and minerals actually help your immune system. Mm -hmm. so to say there's no information out there, is, you know, that's just not true. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would like it if we were um, pushing that a bit more 
to yeah. help people um, with that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know what I mean? I was like, do you, um, do you review like each pain patient and go with, you know, some recommendations for vitamins and, and minerals that will help them specifically? Yeah. Or are you not in the, like the general, you know, you're in this disease, this is the vitamin for you. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. We're definitely, um, again, patient centered. So mm -hmm. we really look at someone's blood work and we actually do what we call functional blood chemistry analysis. So great question. So when we look at the blood, Right, you can look at urine, saliva, and all that, but when we look at blood, we're always medically looking for pathology or disease. And again, we talked about function, dysfunction, and disease. And where we get our numbers, and this is kind of scary, where we get our reference ranges, those reference ranges actually come from the average person going to a particular lab. So it's a bell curve. So they're skewed because who goes to a lab? People that don't feel well. That's why right. they're going. So the sick of the population going to the lab, whether it's Dallas, Flower Mound, you know, wherever it is, Texas. Uh, we have somebody watching from Italy, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there are wider reference ranges, right? So kind of the more useless they become. So we have a lot of patients that come in and go, Doc, I feel terrible, but my doc said my blood work looks perfect. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. How could you feel awful and have perfect blood work? I mean, that, does, that just doesn't go together because that's kind of who you are. So when we look at it, we crunch those numbers and we go – it doesn't matter whether you live in Canada, you know, Europe, Mexico, a human being is a human being, physiology is physiology. Here's healthy right here. And so we know those numbers. So now we look, where are you in reference to that? Uh -huh. And from there, now we can start putting the dots together and go, if this is low or high in this reference range, you may have this symptom. And most patients go, yeah, that's exactly the symptom I have. Okay, well, you haven't got the disease yet. Mm. Get that in the butt and start working on that as opposed to you have a symptom take a med yeah which yeah. again is basically like taking you and, and covering your mouth right yeah. you're trying to yell hey i need help and yeah. someone's just saying be quiet take this med and go about your business right so <laughs> yeah it's it's not a good recipe yeah so my friend nazim he's here from italy he actually put oh. this question in there uh do you think the trend over of over Medication has contributed to this. Our body's not being able to combat. Um, I, I, do you want to? I'm kind of confused at the question there a little yeah, bit. No, I, mean, I, I think I, I kind of grasp it. Okay. Yeah, I definitely think that we've, you know, everything's about balance. So when we ne negate or neglect the fact that, you know, uh, our beings, we, we've got a hat, we're, environment is a part of us. And we neg neglect the environment, the vitamins and the minerals and all the things that are in there. These are the things like, so let's step back a second and look at Linus Pauling. Linus Pauling is the only two-time Nobel Prize winner solo ever. Won it on vitamin C. Brilliant guy. He, this is the other thing he said here, by the way. What's that? This is his other oh. comment about vitamin C when you said that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're on it, right? So <laughs> he, yeah. Apparently he was listening to you ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. So, so Linus uh, gets into orthomolecular medicine, which literally breaks down to right molecules medicine. And he basically sets the normal constituents of the human body are vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, hormones, and enzymes. So you should start there to see if there's imbalances prior to, again, going to another state. And when we mess and we have a lot of toxicity in our, in our system, our vitamins and minerals are how we process that. So again, we start to, we create a problem where we're getting more toxicity in maybe less vitamins and minerals because we've got herbicides and pesticides and we've, we've messed with the soil. We don't give it any rest. Um, NPK is basically the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's the number one fertilizer in the world. Well, it takes 30 elements to make a healthy plant and a healthy human, and that's only three elements. So just think of it in terms of this way. If you put $3 in your bank account for every 30 you took out, not long before you're bankrupt, right? You'd be like so, America. <laughs> no, right, <laughs> exactly. So we're, yeah, nutritionally bankrupt, basically, right? Yep, yep. And so now our bodies are okay. Well, I have to have these deficiencies. So we look more of it as long-term deficiency diseases. Your body's just saying, hey, I, I can't run off this any longer without breaking down. So with over-medicating, you know, and then again with vaccinations, however you look at them, we, uh, part of the way our body grows is by getting exposed to it. We can over sanitize. We need a little bit of dirt. We need a little bit of bugs and all that stuff to help our immune systems grow. And, and only immunizing is, is one way, but again, that makes it kind of very skewed. 
yeah. and so our bodies get out of balance. And as soon as it's out of balance for too long, we run a big risk, right? So again, our, our we've lost, I think they said we've, I don't know, lost so many inches of topsoil, takes thousands of years to recreate that topsoil. Um, and so again, we're just very deficient in those things that make our body run um, worldwide. And so, yeah, so I, and then again, more toxin, even medications, they can be, um, again, in, uh, mitochondrial or powerhouse of the body toxins. And so again, that kind of drives, and we've got to process those. So any kind of toxin we're taking in, whether it's a medication or whatever it may be, it's got to be processed. And that's processed with vitamins and minerals. So we have less coming in as far as vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids and good stuff and more toxins to process. Eventually, again, you're behind the eight ball and now we're in trouble. Wow. wow. Yeah. Over a period of time. Yeah. So the answer to this question, long winded, is yes. <laughs> so uh look yeah he likes your approach now this is my friend nazim he's from uh he's from italy but uh, he's from america but he lives in italy uh rebecca thanks for joining in from longview texas hey we got some people coming in today i'll tell you um this is some really i mean this is to me this is in depth yeah you know dr ozzy and i and i get it all right you you probably why you have people come in to visit you in person because we can't all grasp this yeah. uh, in our minds we we need help we need someone like you her, yours help who who understands it you know, um, it reminded me, though, of something I did years ago. I see my doctor every year because of my epilepsy. Yeah. And uh, probably about six, seven years ago, I go in for my yearly checkup. And I always, it's like, a, you know, you talk about energy. I, I always would go in. I'm always nervous about going to the doctors and everything. And the second I get in there, they, of course, they run all the tests, make sure everything. And they find, like, something on, like, what's, what's the one that measures the heart, the uh, EKG, EK, I, I might have been EKG, EKG. It was something that, like that. Yeah. That basically he came back and said uh, they wanted me to test even more. Yeah. So they come back and in two weeks and I test again and it's and, he, and and it's totally normal. And he goes, I don't know how that happened to you because really, it you know what I mean how how bad it was. How yeah. can this be perfect? <laughs> yeah. And I I said to him, I says, you know what it was? I thought about it and I thought, you know. I get so stressed coming in here. What's going to stress out when you stretch your mind out? Yeah. It's yeah. going to make your heartbeat race and things like yeah. that. Yeah. And he goes, you're right. That's probably it. You probably. And that's when I learned to start staying in tune to, you know what I mean? Like I don't go in and tell the doctor, well, this is my problem. I go in and I said, this is what I think is wrong. Yeah. And I explain everything. You know what I yeah. mean? Because I look at the thought process yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. How in depth do your clients know their own bodies? Oh, um, really well. You know, I'll get some that are just getting into functional medicine and they'll be like, okay, you know, what is this? And they, they're intrigued and they know there's something else that they need to do. And then a lot of them are well-schooled. They've, they've been around. They've actually uh, educated themselves quite well. And so it's, it's good, good and bad because sometimes they've got some bad information and I need to kind of, you know, mm -hmm get them going in a different direction. And then other times it's like, okay, it's just, hey, they just needed these fine pieces that they didn't have and now they're off to the races and they really get better really quick and they get it. They know that 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 80 to 90% is their environmental impact on, on, on their body. And so mm -hmm. now they can start piecing things together. And sometimes it just comes down to our bodies really prioritize. It might say, hey, I, I need to work on my digestive tract first before I work on my liver or you know, I've got something going on with my nervous system and I got to work on that first. And, and we do forget a lot about the mental emotional. It's a, it's a massive thing. There's something called psycho neuroimmunology. And basically that just means that there's certain receptors on the brain and they have the same transmitters on your immune system. So they think of the nerve, the immune system, like a traveling nervous system. It's kind of looking at the internal environment and making an appropriate response. But the thoughts that you think they know for sure now, you know, scientifically have an impact on your immune system. So it's not kind of foo-foo stuff. It's actual real. And so that's why a lot of cancer patients, when they do visualization techniques, they actually start to see their immune system and white blood cells start to rise, right? Mm. So the thoughts that you think have a, have a massive impact. So if you're in a, in a terrible relationship um, or you hate your job, these things can really um, have a negative impact. In fact, one of the highest suicide uh, rates days is Monday. It's the highest one. And the thought being, hey, I 
hate my job and I don't want to go to work on Monday, right? So, um, so, so the the thoughts that you think have a have a huge impact in your relationships, have a huge impact uh, on your health, right? So they they say that the first rule of toxicology is remove yourself from the offending agent, and that could be a relationship, that could be you know uh, a job, right? We've had patients. I think in twenty years, I probably. Had a number that really needed to quit their job, and I've had a handful that did, and it literally changed their whole life. I mean, health-wise, they are in a bad place, bad disease, and it completely turned around for them because that was their major stress that was taking their body down that really. Uh, uh, yeah, you're looking at one that that seizure I had in 2001 when I changed and got my medication in order. Yeah. I was in a job I hated, and I knew the boss, my boss very well. I, I adored this man. Yeah. And I said, listen, I, I can't stand working here anymore. And he said, I know. Help me find somebody to replace you. And I'm literally, I can't tell you how many times he's helped me in my life since I just said, hey, listen, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then I went on to start a, another car business. And then I learned within three years, it was the car industry. I had to get out of the car industry. Yeah. And boy, did my life become at peace Yeah. when I, I did that. And it's so... We've got a couple more questions pop up here in the sure. chat today. So, uh, again, Nazim, uh, what about toxicity with electromagnetic pulses? Do you deal with that in any way? Yeah. So, again, we start talking different things, especially, you know, they'll talk about now, um, you know, uh, the uh, cell phone towers and all that stuff. Um, and we're exposed, you know, all the time. Um, what we notice the most part is that everyone, again, is a little unique in how their bodies will manage it. Some patients, especially patients with concussions and stuff like that, their their nervous system is just so kind of beat up and mm -hmm. um, they'll have a real negative response to them, whereas other people can manage it. It's almost, again, like a toxic load. You get to a certain spot, uh, different for everybody, how much they can manage. What we see the most part is if they have a ton of antioxidants, they load up on antioxidants like blueberries and strawberries and, and different antioxidants that you can get. And then a lot of really, really good omega-3 uh, oils. It mm -hmm. seems to help the cell, the cell wall. And the cell wall is, is something that's really negatively impacted by that. Uh, and that cell wall, the more fluid it is, the better that cell wall is. Uh, it communicates with every single cell and on and on and on down the list from cell to cell. And the more rigid, the more stuff it doesn't have in there, um, the, the worse it does. And the more things like electromagnetic stresses um, make a real negative impact for people. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to get away from it. So I think you just got to load up on those things. Yeah. So uh, another one here that comes in from Stephen, and he says, what is the most essential nutrient and what is the most common deficient nutri nutrient? So I think worldwide zinc is uh, the most deficient and that's super important for guys because it's actually a precursor to uh, testosterone mm -hmm. um, and a lot of different things real important for the gut. Um, it's in a lot of different pathways. The other big one is magnesium. Mm. Like across the board, people are deficient in magnesium. And then I think, honestly, uh, don't quote me on this, but about 2 billion people in the world are, are low or deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D is a, is a major impact for the immune system. So think of vitamin D. Yes, it supports bringing in calcium, but think about going to the orchestra. Uh, vitamin D is like the conductor of the orchestra mm -hmm. uh, of your immune system. So no conductor, just mad music, autoimmune mm -hmm. conditions, and, and maybe increased chance of a cancer. It's just all over the place. But you've got a conductor, beautiful, sweet music, and it takes care of your body and your immune system. So, so those are probably the big ones, you know, either magnesium and zinc being close as a tie. Um, I might see more magnesium in my office, but magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D. Cool, cool. So, and then Azim says he's uh, he's got to do his homework on uh, on functional medicine, which, uh, by the way, the, the 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 website's down there, and we'll get to it in the end. So, uh, Danny Kane writes and says, for those who have started late to a healthy lifestyle, are there studies that show potential reversal of the seeds, i.e., heart disease, kidney disease, etc.? Yeah, absolutely. There's um, especially if you look in uh, Dr. Dean Ornish um, is a cardio MMD cardiologist uh, has done a lot of work with reversing uh, cardiovascular disease by working on lifestyle, especially increasing things like HDL, um, your good cholesterol, and getting like triglycerides down. Um, and again, that would come from things like good fibers and really for the most part uh, carbs like 
bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, pop chips, candy cake, those things really drive that up. Um, and inflammatory markers. And then again, you start bringing the bad cholesterol in. And there's other things as well. Uh, taurine, arginine, those are super important for heart arrhythmias. But yeah, so there's a lot of, of uh, lifestyle choices that again, can I think Dr. Dean Ornish wrote um, on changing your genome and creating a new new uh, um, new genes as far as coding goes for genes within 90 days, mm -hmm. um, and a lot to do with heart disease. And as far as can, same thing. Now, I would tell Mr. Kane that there definitely is a point of no return. So there is some tissue. The heart tissue is tough. They call it. it I was going to get into technical terms. Post mitotic, meaning once it's damaged, it doesn't really go back. But the cool part about your heart is a lot of times it'll actually create other avenues and other arteries and, and veins to get in there and actually give your heart the blood it needs when things are getting clogged up. But yeah. eventually it, it can't keep up and we've got a heart problem. So um, brain is the same way, but the other tissue like your skin, it can kind of recreate and repair. But again, every tissue, there, there becomes a point of no return. But we've had some patients in our office um, and you think they've been told, hey, you're just not going to make it. And we see some massive changes and we, we see some people with their lives are saved. So, mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, I got through something a lot. We got, we got a lot of people quitting comments in here today. So, I'll, oh, Nazim says he's going to solve the Monday problem and just go to Tuesday from now on. <laughs> I like that. I think that's a solution. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice boss. He understands my issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great there. Uh, thank you, Nazim. Um, and I, and he also, I've dropped all pastas, breads last year, which is a challenge in Italy, big improvement. Let me, let me ask you about that. Cause I like the, you know, the breads and stuff. My wife and I, like she makes all kinds of, uh, you know, what is it? It's what's that, that Jewish, um, you know, bread. Um, I can't think of the name of, um, I can't even know. It's like braided and stuff like that. She makes it that we love breads. I love my, like my rolls and stuff. Is it true that breads are bad for you? <laughs> Well, everyone's unique, right? But yeah. unfortunately, what they, it's more what they've done when they've hybridized okay. the breads. Um, it, changed, it changes it into different proteins. So now your body doesn't recognize it. That's why we start to have problems where people a long time ago, oh, bread was never a problem. It's kind of what we've done to it. Mm -hmm. The other one is they have spliced um, GMOs in, in America, at least, into it. So when you go to Europe, some things like milks and, and breads are a little different because they don't allow GMOs, genetically modified foods. And so when you splice it into the seed, you can't wash it off. It's there forever. So it's more about the body looking at stuff and going, well, that's not normal. That's an antigen, and I'm going to attack it. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's a little different on, well, how, how badly do you attack that? And if you have, you're genetically set up, maybe that brings you to celiac, or you could still have some pretty bad inflammatory cascades, even if you don't have an autoimmunity to it and you have an intolerance it mm -hmm. can still cause a lot of problems so and then there's a, you know so if you didn't have an issue with it um i think in moderation but again a lot of the when you hybridize it and when you've got the gmos um if you can maybe get organic then um it's a little bit better but a lot of people are having problems because of that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, we tried to switch. My wife and I tried to switch to like a, it's about five years, six years ago. We tried to switch to an all organic diet. Now we've strayed from that over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, uh, but there's certain things we try to keep organic and try to tr keep true foods. Um, but yeah, yeah, Stephen, that's the name of that. Uh, I don't know how they say that, chocolate bread. Uh -huh. um, but you know that that's it, it, it. We want we were trying to keep like organic type foods. Uh, yeah. I have friends who are all like, you know, be vegan. Uh, me, I'm a griller. I like to cook my ribs and yeah. cook my steaks and, you know. Uh, you know in Texas. Uh, yeah, I'm in Texas. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bought a, I got a rotisserie for my grill for chickens and stuff. Yeah. I'm a meat guy, all right? Yeah. But I eat healthy vegetables. Like I get organic peas, you know, beans, corn, like all that stuff uh, as well. You know, it's and it's trying to be as healthy as possible. But there's going to be people who are listening to this who go, yeah, but I still want to eat my McDonald's. I still want to eat my McDonald's every day. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just comes down to, again, how, how, how bad are you feeling, right? At some point, you might go, maybe it's uh, the, the cons, you know, outweigh the pros on that, right? Yeah. And so, um, honestly, meat, not, not a bad thing. Uh, meat got a bad name because we did a bunch of work on 
cows that were stuffed full of corn and and grain and then they changed the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in them mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that omega-6 is really bad and then we ate that and then we started having arachidonic acid and different problems but grass-fed uh, free-range beef actually has a lot of omega-3s in it so mm -hmm. it's actually not bad and honestly most of my vegans like true vegetarians and vegans that are maybe five to ten years five years they're cleaning things out they feel really good 10 years, things can start to change because the net utilization of a lot of the proteins they get is not enough for their body to kind of thrive. And if they're not combining their proteins properly, um, they, they don't get those essential aminos that they need, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those building blocks, and actually start to get really sick. Now, I have noticed some people that are of Indian descent, they've done it for generations and thousands of years, their bodies can manage that a little bit better, but most Caucasians and stuff, uh, eventually they start to, they need some more, uh, sources of protein. So, mm. you know, everyone's unique, but, uh, yeah, yeah. meat's not a horrendous thing. It, it more so. And again, you need carbs, carbs come from vegetables, good and healthy vegetables. So that's not bad. So mm. you're, you're not, you're not too far off there. You, okay. You, might want to so, okay so then you will accept the invitation to come over to my house when i cook yeah. some ribs then right yeah <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i make my own i have my own, and i make my own sauce and everything too so yeah. it's like this is just that's the one thing i do but anyway yeah. uh it's just been very informative but you know i mean about getting healthy it's not just about eating it's not just about drugs but it's about a healthy lifestyle right so, yeah uh, and i like how you've emphasized that on today's show so you know, Dr. Ozzy, what is the best way these people can get a hold of you and find out more about, you know, maybe articles you've written on the subject or, you know, maybe even come and visit you? Yeah. Um, probably our website, right? So functionalmedicinecenter.com, functionalmedicinecenter.com. At the bottom there, functionalmedicinecenter.com. If you look up Dr. Ozzy Flower Round, you'll find me. Um, but that's probably the best way to get a hold of us. And, and most everything is on there. We have videos on there. Uh, my YouTube channel's on there. So just going to the website is, is going to lead you in the best direction. Cool. So, and you got a lot of, you, you do a lot of videos and stuff. I've noticed a couple blog posts and stuff like that. So you're doing an awful lot of informative stuff using the internet, correct? Yeah. I'm trying to do more and more. That's not, as we talked previously, not my you know, area of expertise. Um, but um, try, yeah, I'm definitely trying to work more and more on that. Maybe use Instagram a bit more and put some things out there just little pieces for people um that they can get tidbits little healthy tips and stuff like that cool cool so uh and nazim asked if you were on linkedin are you on linkedin uh, yes i am okay so yeah nazim will probably reach out to you on linkedin i know he's 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 good good guy so cool well you know dr ozzy i thank you coming on today uh but i've okay. got to do my end of show finish up okay i got i got a little list here uh a little nervous I was uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's going to fly by the seat of my pants, but all right, let's do it. All right. So, yeah, I'd like to end my show with something fun. It's uh, just about nine questions I have. This or that, I'll give you two choices. You pick one. Hopefully, all of these are you've got interest. Some okay. of them may not. I don't know, but we'll see. I start off to find out who my, you know, science fiction people are by asking Star Wars or Star Trek. Mm. I know okay. they're both good. I but. know, right? Oh, yeah, C Captain Kirk or, or John Luke. Uh, I, 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 you know, and he was Canadian, old uh, <laughs> Captain Kirk. So, you know, I'm going to go Star Wars. I'm going to go Star Wars. I, I like Chewbacca. Okay. How about Batman or Superman? I got to go with Soup. Okay. I always wanted to fly. Yeah. So, in today's day and world, we get into the car. Are you now listening to podcasts or music in your car? More podcasts and, and information. And like audio books too, kind of in that same field. I'm listening to audio books and podcasts in my car lately too. Yep. So. Yeah, totally. How about coffee or tea? Coffee. I actually have a healthy coffee on my website. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, it's actually really good. It's out of Canada. <laughs> I, yeah, I like espresso. I have two Thank shots you. of espresso every morning. That's my <laughs> coffee now. <laughs> okay, yep, coffee. My next one goes into our more food products, and that is you live in Texas, so I got to know, taco or hamburger? Well, good street taco, a real one is tough to beat. Um, but uh, I, I grew up loving cheeseburgers, so I'm going to cut and, and uh, shout out to Five Guys. I'll go there. Quite well, five Guys is good, but yeah. yeah, yeah so totally. tacos, like when I worked in the car wash industry, we yeah. used to have this guy who came around. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you're a lot, you have a lot of Mexicans and, and you know, South Americans. Yeah. 
And this one guy would come around and make tacos out of his trunk. They were a buck a piece. Yeah. I'm telling you, they were the best tacos I've yeah. ever had. And you're yeah. like, you don't want to ask because he's cooking <laughs> in the trunk of his car. But still, all right, they were good. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I can't, about, I can't argue with that. Yeah. How about beach or mountains for vacation? <laughs> oh, boy. I got to go mountains. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a it's mix lately, you know. It's, it depends on what you're feeling like, you know. Yeah, I like the beach, but lately I'm like, man, I'd like to go sit up and high in the Rockies, and be able to look down on the valley, and you know, I mean, it's mixed yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next one, because you're Canadian. Yeah, I got to ask this one because uh, a lot of people here in America have opinions on this. <laughs> okay, and that is pineapple on pizza. Yes or no? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome. The Hawaiian. Uh, 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 not a big fruit guy on my pizzas, but the occasional Hawaiian. Not yeah. bad. Okay. Like gravy and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> and my next one, the most controversial question I'd like to add. Does the toilet paper go over on the roll or under? Oh, uh, anyway, I, I want to put it on at that moment. <laughs> Don't really think about it. I know. At the moment in time that I get the toilet paper roll out, I don't care. I'm using it for something yeah. else. Yeah. I got business here. Yeah. And my last one, boxers or briefs? Oh, boxers. Boxers. See, it's not that hard, Dr. Ozzy. See, we have a little bit of fun. So. All right. One it. more time, tell them your website, Dr. Ozzy, so they can get a hold of you. Come over there and check you out. Functionalmedicinecenter.com. All right, my friend. Well, I thank you, Dr. Ozzy, for being on our show today. Thanks. A lot of and fun. you, the listener, I thank you guys for tuning in today. Great questions you're asking our guests. Be sure to go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our also our Apple podcast. Go to TimGilletteShow.com to get you there. And come back real soon where we will have another great guest like Dr. Ozzy. Go follow him. Go check out his website. Follow him on social media. And we'll see you guys soon with another great guest. I'm Tim Gillette. See you next time.